Let's talk about the equation of a circle. The standard form for circles is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared, where your center point is at the point h, k, and your radius is equal to r. So let's look at some examples of what they might ask about the equation of a circle. So for these examples, they are already in standard form and you just need to pick out things like the center point and the radius. So for number one, if I have to pick out the center point, since standard form says x minus h and y minus k, I would say that my center point is at the point negative three, two. And my radius would be the square root of this number, so the radius is just four. For number two, I need to do the same thing. So change the sign when you pick out your center point. So the center point is five, negative seven. And your radius again is the square root of this number. It doesn't always have to be even, as you see in the next example. Now what if we just have x squared by itself? So you think about what number would have been there the only number that could be represented right there would be a zero. So for this center point, we have zero because nothing else is with the x. We put zero. Zero, one. You still pick out the one by changing that sign. And then the radius would be the square root of 40. You could either simplify that or just get a decimal. And then for number four, the center point would be zero, zero when it looks like this one. And your radius would be the square root of 64, which is just 8. So what if it's not in standard form? We need to look at a few examples of that. If it is not in standard form, we have to do completing the square to get it into standard form. So what I say about these, when they look all jumbled up, they're definitely not in that form you just saw on those two boards. We need to put the x's together, so like x squared needs to move over here. We've got to get things organized. So I'm going to rearrange and then I'll tell you what I've done. Okay, so my organization is that I need to move everything to one side for the x's and the y's. So I put the x squared over there, I put it with the 4x, and I left room to complete the square for my x values. So I can go ahead and put that in parentheses. Then I did the same thing for the y's. So I put y squared together with negative 2y, and I left room to complete the square for the y values. And then I moved my constant to the other side, so I moved 20 over here. And I made room to add the two numbers I'm going to add right here when I complete the square. Let me show you the next step. Half of 4, to fill in our blank, remember we take half of the middle term and we square it. So half of that middle term's coefficient was 4. Half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So put it on both sides. The same thing here. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1, so we put it on both sides. And then we're almost to standard form, because now we can rewrite these the way we looked at when we learned how to complete the square. This trinomial is a perfect square trinomial, so its factors match, and its factors are x plus 2, because it's always half of that number. And it's always that sign, just x plus 2 squared is equivalent to x squared plus 4x plus 4, so we could rewrite it. Over here we have y minus 1, and then 20 plus 4 plus 1 is 25, and now that looks like standard form. So it looked like I was going to do a lot of work, but really after that first step of organizing everything, you complete the square to rewrite it in standard form. So now I can pick out my center point is negative 2, 1, and my radius is 5. So let's look at one more of those. I'm going to get organized first. So I'm going to put x squared with the other x term, which was negative 8x. Leave room to complete the square. I'm going to group the y's together. So y squared minus 6y plus blank. And I'm going to move my constant term over here. So to move it, I had to subtract it. 
And then I have to leave room to add what I'm going to add right here to that side. So then I put in half of negative 8 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So put that on both sides. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. And negative 3 squared would be 9. So I'll put that on both sides. So then we can write it in standard form. So we have x minus 4 would be my binomial for x. For y, I have y minus 3. It's half of 6. That's half of the negative 8. And that's half of negative 6. Negative 16 plus 16 cancels out. So this side just adds up to 9. And now I can easily pick out the center is 4, the rate, or center is 4, 3. I was getting ahead of myself. And the radius would be the square root of 9, which is 3. Now one more thing I just want to mention before we finish up this video is what if they are asked, they're asking you to graph a circle. It's really not hard at all, but I just want to demonstrate one really fast. So let's just look at this last one right here. What if they tell you that your center is at 4, 3? So I'm going to plot it 1, 2, 3, 4, up 3. So you put your center point at 4, 3. So I went over 4, up 3. And then I have a radius of 3. So I would go from that center point 3 in all four directions and put another point. So I need to go 1, 2, 3 to the right, 1, 2, 3 up, 1, 2, 3 to the left, and 1, 2, 3 down. And then don't draw a square, sketch a circle. But that's all you would have to do to draw a circle. And if they give you a circle, you could pick out the radius and the center point by examining what's happening.